Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome along. I'm Fraser Pins. And I am Prabhankar uh, Day, and we welcome you all um, to our talk. We'd like to start by thanking the organizers of NCNGT um, for giving us the opportunity to organize this, this topic group. And also uh, for organizing this nearly carbon neutral form. Um, so as indicated in the, the title of our, our topic, our topic group, um, in a Hagar, Hagar for all the uh, applications and related invariants, um, this, this um, group will be focused on Hagar floor homology and its relation to the rest of, of mathematics. Um, so uh, the Hagar floor homology uh, is actually a package uh, of invariant, uh, of low dimensional manifolds um, uh, introduced first by Oswald and Zabo uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, uh, so what it does, uh, it actually provides graded vector spaces. Uh, so if a three manifold or a knot is actually fed to it, uh, it's going to give you back uh, some tail vector spaces. And the rest, we're not going to give you the definition because it's it's uh, quite involved. And in particular, it uses sort of symplectic topology and um, analysis. Um, nevertheless, in addition to pro pro providing um, invariance for free manifolds, it assigns to corporatisms uh, maps between uh, vector bases. Yeah, um, uh, so what is actually a uh, corporatism? Uh, it's actually, uh, so if you have two, three manifolds, uh, it's actually four manifolds uh, that has boundary as uh, the two disjoint copies of your manifold, similar for knots. Okay, um, so if you're, I guess we'll take the, the case of knots here and go into a little more detail. So if you're only interested in, in knots, um, not for, well, the invariant you get is called knot floor homology. This was introduced by Oswald Sabo and Jacob Rasmussen independently. And it assigns um, to, to knots a given free manifold, um, well, maybe with some extra assumptions, uh, by graded vector spaces. Right, and uh, so one grading being uh, uh, is actually called the Alexander grading, uh, which is actually um, you get from the knot, and the other grading is a homological grading, which is known also as natural index. Which I guess we'll, we'll maybe talk a bit more about later. Um, just as a warning, uh, Hagar floor homology in general is sort of quite quite involved in compute, um, so. Um, yes, uh, it can uh, actually be hard uh, to compute at times, but uh, uh, what it actually does, uh, it actually does have some very, very important uh, information about the knot. Okay, um, so not formal is, is an often learned, I, I guess we've, we've indicated. Um, however, the, the number one, so if you assign to every 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 knot the number one, that is also a knot invariant. Um, of course, a completely completely useless one. Um, thankfully, knot floor homology is a, a better invariant than than invariant one. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, a little bit better, a uh, little bit really. Uh, so, for example, uh, it can actually detect uh, uh, the minimal cytogenesis of a knot, uh, uh, which is uh, which is really the minimal genus as uh, of a cycle surface that. Uh, some knot can bound, and it can also detect if a knot is fibered or not. Um, so, what is it for a knot to be fibered? Um, well, basically, a knot is, is fibered if its complement can be swept out by uh, circles um, worth of, of, of ciphered surfaces. Um, so, not, in addition to getting information about fiberness, uh, it also contains information about the unknotting number. Uh, right. So, I mean. Um, which is actually uh, uh, the minimum number of crossing changes that you um, need to make for a knot uh, to get to unknot. Now it's really, really, really easy uh, to define, but it's very, very hard to compute. Indeed, and on a related note, um, knot floor homology also contains sort of four-dimensional information. So it contains information about the the four-ball genus of a knot. So this is the minimum genus of a um, surface bounded by a knot in the four ball. Um, 
So here we, we have knots that live in S3, and we view S3 as, as bounding the, the four ball. And so we can ask sort of what's the minimal genus of a surface that's a knot can bound in a four ball. Uh, right. So, I mean, um, not only that, uh, the Higgs homology package us also actually contains information about various complex structures as well, uh, which are special geometric structures uh, in uh, two three nine four. Yeah, and I guess we'd like to take uh, a moment here to advertise one of the other NCMGT um, topic groups. Um, so there's one focused entirely on, on compact structures, and you should definitely check it out. Um, I know I'll, I know I will be. Yes, uh, me too. Okay, um, so that was a sort of very cursory overview of Hickard floor homology and a brief attempt to to motivate an interest in it. Um, so we're going to spend the rest of of this introductory talk um, surveying what the what our what our speakers will will be discussing in their in their talks. Right. So. Um... Slight disclaimer uh, is that uh, uh, we are actually recording this introductory talk on June 15th, uh, which is the day appear to uh, the deadline of um, submitting the talk. So we don't actually have a very good idea uh, what the students are going to talk about, but we do actually have a rough idea. So we're just going to try and uh, just talk about that. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully we're not way off base. Um, uh, <laughs> in any case, um, so. So I guess we've, we've kind of asked this question already, but given a, an invariant is not natural to sort of ask, what, what can you do with it? So one, one thing we'll be addressing in this, in this um, uh, topic session is sort of what, what more can we do with, with Hager floor homology? Uh, right, so I mean, the first question uh, that we can actually ask is that, well, um, when are two not actually concordant with each other? Indeed, so what, what, what does that mean? Um, well, uh, we call we say two knots are concordant if they um, well you you view one is living in you think about the manifold s three cross the integral you think about one knot is living in s three cross zero the other knot is living in s three cross one and you ask does there exist an embedded annulus embedded in s three cross cross the integral um, such so that one boundary component is the first knot so they're not living in s three cross zero and other other boundary is the knot living in s three cross one. Um, uh, and again, like this, this, there's also another um, NCNGT group um, focused entirely on concordance. And so again, I'd, I'd like to advertise uh, advertise um, attending that session as well. Yes, yes. Now, uh, so these questions of um, when two knots are actually concordant uh, is quite hard. And uh, um, uh, uh, the arrival of knot homology has actually improved our understanding of how uh, the concordant group uh, behaves and stuff like that. But uh, as although much has been done uh, over the last decade or so, uh, there are still various long-standing open questions in this area. Yeah, and indeed, indeed Sally Collins' is, um, this talk is going to address sort of, um, questions about, about concordance um, through the, the lens of, of Higgard floor homology. Right. Uh, so that's actually um, purely topological kind of thing. But if you'd like, Pictures better. Well, you can actually ask. Okay, so I mean, what does knot homology say about uh, some unknotting number of of, of of a knot? Now, I mean, uh, it can be hard to calculate the knotting number, but I mean, if you can actually calculate the knot homology of a knot, that may actually tell you a lot about the unknotting number of that knot. So it's more of the the effect of of satellite operations. Um, where here a satellite operation is sort of taking a knot in, in the solid torus and like tying it into the shape of another knot. Um, the effect of these satellite operations on the unknotting number and the sort of on invariance generally um, is quite quite difficult, difficult to determine. Um, uh, and this is exactly what Weijie's um, Weijie Shen's talk um, uh, addresses. Right. So. Those were the applications um, of Higgs homology, of knot homology. Uh, 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 but I mean, uh, as we have actually mentioned it before, that uh, Higgs homology is also quite is, uh, uh, um, useful. It's very hard to compute at times. Now, uh, since the original definition actually uh, uh, requires a lot of analysis, as I said, um, but I mean, the remarkable thing is that uh, over the course of last two decades, uh, Higgs homology 
have found several combinatorial ways uh, to compute a Higgs cosmology and not cosmology. Yes, we can. Right? We can compute it. And in some sense, this is really what is what is the best thing about about Higgs cosmology: the fact the fact you can compute it. Right. So, I mean, that's what uh, it actually um, makes it so popular. And uh, so I would actually say that uh, it's actually um, as popular among mathematicians as uh, Lionel Messi. Uh, well, I mean, almost. Um, but, I mean, it's actually uh, almost true as well. So. Um. Okay, um, and this brings us to the to um to uh Roman Klosky's uh talk, um, which will be sort of around addressing this this kind of question. So in particular, Roman's going to be talking about uh, Maslow index. Um, and in particular, he'll, he'll give a sort of combinatorial description of it. Um, uh, so this is one of the the gradings of the not sort of Modi package we we um talked about in an earlier slide. Right. So, um, uh, so we have actually talked about satellites and uh, uh, how to compute an optimal and hypothetical and how hard it is. Whole body uh, is going to be talking about how optimal changes us uh, under satellite operation. Now, uh, uh, so this actually builds us on various very deep work in optimality over the last decade. So please check that out as well. Okay, um, so we've discussed applications and computations. Um, so I guess the another important feature of, of Higgard floor homology is its relation um, to the rest of mathematics. And in particular, Higgard floor homology is related to another, a good a good deal of other other invariants. Um, uh, right, so um, yeah, uh, so Higgard homology is actually related to, um, to gauge theory. You can actually find this earth in relation to instanton monopoles. And it's also actually known to be equivalent to as uh, embedded contact homology. And this is giving some kind of indication that, that uh, bigger floor homology might contain information about, about contact structures. Um, this is indeed the case. And so in, in his talk, um, Shun Yu Wan is going to talk about um, using Higgar floor homology to sort of distinguish between different different contact structures and sort of this relationship with this uh, and, and surgery. Right. Um, uh, 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 among other things, um, Higgs cosmology is also actually known to be related with Kovalev um, cosmology and lattice cosmology. Now, the, uh, the last two are actually known to be um, computation friendly, and um, so yeah, yeah. And uh, so lattice, lattice, the relationship between Higgs floor cosmology and, and lattice cosmology um, will be interesting. So in separate dynamic Colvin's Colvin's talk. Um, uh, so in particular, we, we talked about how, how various aspects of, of not floor homology um, are sort of reflected in this, this lattice homology world. And I guess one, one small thing I'd like to add about, about lattice homology is that it's sort of uh, an invariant coming from, from singularity, singularity theory. Um, so sort of, I guess an algebraic geometry type, type thing, perhaps. Um, all right, okay. so uh, uh, that's, uh, that's all about uh, all the talk that we have. But we also, uh, 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 so we also actually have some live events uh, apart from this asynchronous talks, um, which we actually hope that you'll be able to attend as far as your um, convenience. Yeah. Um, so in particular, we have a, a virtual tea time. Um, so this will be a sort of informal gathering. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what it will involve just yet, um, but hopefully we'll think of something by next week. Um, and this will be a, held on uh, Thursday, 22nd of June, uh, between 1 and 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Eastern time. Right. And uh, so our speakers will also be holding virtual office hours. So Roman, Shunyu, and Stepo will be hoping um, their office hour on Friday, 23rd, uh, from 1 to 2 p.m., while Sally, Weijia, and Paul will be um, have their off trial on um, Wednesday, twenty eighth June, from one to. Yeah, and we'll we'll also all be on on Discord too. So if you you should absolutely feel free to sort of ask uh, questions of the speakers on on Discord. Um, but yeah, I guess we we hope you'll be able to attend the the live events too. Thank you um, so much for for bearing with us through through this um, this this introductory talk. And we hope to meet you all virtually in the uh, next one week, uh, one and a half week. All right. All right. Bye bye, bye everybody. Bye.